<laughs> Welcome back to the Coronavirus Cream Spot. I'm your host, co-host, Marshall Matters. I'm here with Rob Diggity Dangle Dog. Hanging in there. He's hanging and dangling. That's why we call him the Rob Diggity Dangling Dog. That's what I do. Such a weird launch schedule the past two weeks. It happens. Let me tell you guys what happened. There's been some fuck shit going on. Sunday night, Royal Rumble. You're not getting it out of me. <laughs> you're not getting it the podcast out of me on Royal Rumble night. It didn't quite hit as hard as I wanted it to, but it was a really good Royal Rumble. Yeah. Edge coming back was good. But that's kind of when I stopped watching is when he got real big back in the 2000s. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It was a little bit before that for me. Pretty much the end of the Attitude Era, yeah. before John Cena and all that shit's when I started watching, or, or stopped watching. But I was looking at his resume, man. He's one of the biggest stars they've ever had. Edge? As, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's the rated R superstar. Yeah, he kind of looked like a skeleton in the face, though. So. <laughs> yeah, he, he looked good, man. Yeah, body-wise, yeah, man. He said, I got grit. And he definitely looks like yeah. shit. So. <laughs> Just old. <laughs> Shitty and gritty. Yeah. <laughs> all these old fucks coming back. Yeah. You got fucking Taz back in AEW, too. I didn't know that. Yeah, I fucking hate Taz. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's all right. I don't think he's that I, bad. I've never been a fan of Taz, <laughs> besides an ECW. <laughs> he's a suplex machine, dude. <laughs> yeah, tell that to Brock Lesnar. <laughs> <laughs> Brock. Let's bore them with wrestling talk. <laughs> and then uh, Monday night, when we sometimes when we record it late, I called Rob, and I was like, I'm tired, baby. Yeah. And he said, I'll go to sleep, baby. It, it worked for the best anyways. My yeah. wife had surgery on Friday, so she hasn't been able to move, so I've been <laughs> having, to be, having to be daddy at the house. You know what I mean? Hold still. This is going to sting a little bit. <laughs> she has one arm. One of her arms got amputated. So Roll over and touch your toes. I'll show you where the monster goes. <laughs> uh, but no, she had sh- shoulder surgery, so. Okay, so it's like eh, I can't really can't really leave her there by herself, anyways. Cause... She threw a lot of curveballs as a kid. That's the, I hear that's tough on the elbow and the shoulder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a wicked curveball, <laughs> a wicked cave, a wicked cave. We would like to thank our four new Patreon subscribers, starting out with Megan Peter Track, Megan Peter Zach. Thank you, Megan, for your Patreon pledge. Yeah, thank you. Next, we got Anthony Perch. What a beautiful name! Very beautiful. Joe, Acres, Joe, I will never forget that time that you and I scissored at the youth youth camp, uh, Broccoli and Carrots. Listen to your parents. You were okay. there. Yeah, he was. Scissoring. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. And last but definitely least, Brian Wright. Thank you very much, Mr. Wright. Wright State University, success within your reach. Little, Representing Dayton, Ohio. Little local, local advert there. Mm-hmm. And if you go to Dayton.com, they're voting for the best podcast in Dayton right now. We're going to put the it's link in the episode up. description. We want to kick the shit out of everybody. <laughs> we want to burn this town down. I don't see how we aren't. You never know, man. But you never know. Don't get so fucking fool yourself. No, I'm just saying. The lady that runs the competition has a podcast. <laughs> there's no there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it, my friend. With five iTunes reviews. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's two. I don't even think. Okay. Oh, whatever. So go uh, Dayton.com. We're going to put the link in the episode description. You can vote once per day with yeah. all of your emails. So we lose. I'm blaming you guys. Not all, our podcast. I'm blaming you guys. So for all of you weirdos <laughs> with multiple emails. There you go. Do us a favor. Fulfill your destiny. We want to be kings. Out. We want to be kings. Kings of, among men. Of what? I have no idea. Who knows? Of this fucking shitty city of this shitty kitty for <laughs> this sure. shitty kitty <laughs> <laughs> and I'd also like to thank our official sponsor sticker sponsor of the show sticker theories go to sticker theories.com use a promo code all caps Ohio and you can get 10 percent off your custom sticker orders these stickers Ooh. are fucking i gave stickers out today and he said god damn these are nice stickers i said tony these motherfuckers will stick to anything <laughs> so tony's a big fan of the show so he's probably listening right now just giggling like a fucking rob with a dick in his butt <laughs> that's that's when I'm my happiest. <laughs> <laughs> a New Jersey man has been accused of exposing himself while standing on the front lawn of a home. You have nothing else better to do, New Jersey, so. Joseph P. Doopy. <laughs> <laughs> Doobie. Doop. Doob. Joseph P. Doob, 36, <laughs> of Beverly, New Jersey, was charged via summons on Tuesday with indecent exposure, open lewdness, and disorderly conduct. 
According to court papers, a woman reported to Bristol Borough Police on Sunday, January 12th, that she was walking her dog. This is what you get for doing exercise, bitch. There you go. In the 1100 block of Radcliffe Street when she <laughs> spotted a man. <laughs> In mesh basketball shorts with his penis over the top of the shorts. That's me. That's how you kill a boner. Everybody knows that's waistband technique. I don't think that this is all that bad. (laughs) He was reported to be masturbating while watching her. Just petting his head. (laughs) Oh, hey there, little guy. Uh, Shooter's gonna shoot. That's why I got these motherfucking (laughs) basketball shorts on. She said she called her boyfriend and did not wish to walk past the man because her apartment was in that direction. Last week, a detective made contact with Doobie in the 1100 block of Radcliffe Street. He told a detective that he believed police were there because someone, someone was exposing themselves, police said. At the police station, Doobie said he was smoking a cigarette alone outside of a Radcliffe Street residence and had his pants down, but he did not expose himself, police wrote in court papers. A few minutes later, he recalled replying lotion to his groin area (laughs) along Radcliffe Street on January 12th as a woman walked by. He blamed the need for lotion on the fact his testicles were raw. (laughs) <laughs> Don't use lotion for that. Hey, 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 this is a big, biggest understanding. You boys are telling me that I can't stand out in my front yard and rub lotions on my nut sacks. This ain't a free country. This is ain't what Donald Obama wanted when he became fucking president. I do whatever the fuck I want. He's my president. I love peaches. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. We're going to fucking die from the coronavirus. Oh, definitely. (laughs) I was reading the statistics last night. I put it on the uh, Facebook page. (laughs) Yeah. We're going to fucking die. (laughs) Ah, fuck it. There's... It's about time for a new plague. Our sister show, brother show, whatever. Some friends of ours, the Bones and Tubs podcast. Turn my headphones up. I can't hear shit. We did a... How's that? Uh, Yeah, that's way better. Okay. They did a... They did a coronavirus episode this week, so you can go check them out, Bones and Tubs. But they posted a picture. They're building fucking walls on the streets going into this whatever, Wuhan, Muon, Milan, whatever epicenter it is for um, where this coronavirus is coming from. They're building hmm. brick and mortar walls in the middle of the road so you can't even get into the into the city. It's completely magical. That's pretty sweet. Are your headphones still okay? You're staring like you're about to punch the fucking board. No, no, no. Okay. I'm good. Okay. Just no punching, man. Unless it's donkey punching. <laughs> exactly. So this week, we're going to be covering curses. We're just going to sit here and we're going to motherfuck the microphone for 45 minutes. That's what's up. Cursing, saying bad languages, talking about marijuanas. Another thing that I put on the Facebook page today is... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Goldberg from... Mighty Ducks. Yeah. He's fucked up, man. Yeah, man, meth's a hell of a drug. Well, I've never tried it, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> I would love to get him on the show and just hear his incoherent ramblings. He looks like he doesn't have any teeth. It was the girl that took his job, uh, like Julie the Cat Rodriguez. Or <laughs> you remember the movie? I it, That was a long time ago. Oh, hold on a second. We got I don't remember. Girl, <clears throat> goalie, Mighty Ducks. What Pick was her name? Mighty I don't Duck remember. Too. Julie the Cat Gaffney. Yes, she all right. took his job. Stole it. Ever since then, he's breaking into shit. Yeah, man. Getting fucked up. He took that hard. He looks like a dehydrated sack of potatoes right now. <laughs> <this. laughs> yeah. He's only 40, man. He looks like No that. way. Yeah. He is not 40. I swear to God. He looks like he's in his 60s. He looks like a sack of shit warmed yeah. up. He looks terrible. That's what math does to you, man. It ages you. That's crazy. I love to go through the mug shots on Dayton Daily News and guess how old people are and then look at their date of birth and be like, holy shit. I bet it was his turd that I stepped in a long time ago at the blood bank. <laughs> he was doing a flying V down the sidewalk and he had a little, little droplet. Oh, God. If you've never listened to the Brohio podcast before, then you're in for quite the treat. Kind of. I talked to the ad agency this week. Because we put these ads in, they've really been fucking us. They were like, "You're gonna make money." <laughs> it's been a fuck. We made a little. We made some money, but not nearly as they're not. We thought we were gonna be sultans. <laughs> so yeah, that's yeah. The way they portrayed it. We'd already been scouting castles and and she okey She called my bluff because what I've been doing is we're supposed to put an ad in the middle of the show, and she's like, "It looks like you've put all of your mid roll ads at the end of the episode." <laughs> Oops! And I'm like, "You got me, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> You're under my shit. You're under my shit." 
So we didn't, we just didn't want to have the interruption on in the middle. Yeah. So I think what I'm going to do now is hopefully in the middle of this episode, be like, and here's a quick break from our sponsors and give it a minute, you know, <laughs> give, say the, the ads can only last 60 seconds. It's either 60 seconds or two minutes. I don't know. As long as we're not in the middle of a sentence, and then all of a sudden it just goes, get in the zone, auto zone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm breaking in the middle of this episode, and this is just for scientific purposes. If it doesn't get any better, I'm like, you fucking lied to me. You got me fucked up. And I'm just going to see if it works or not. Because if it is the problem, then you guys could potentially hear a one-minute ad in the middle of the show. But I think we've talked about it at, at nauseum. Yeah. We uh, beat that dead horse. Yeah. So if you don't like it, then just write us and we'll stop doing it. <laughs> we did have a, we did have a review this week that said uh, the guy in the background has a racist voice. <laughs> <laughs> Me? Oh, yeah, I think it's you. I don't know. I have a racist voice. What's that even mean? Was it at least a five star? No, it was a one star. Oh, what the sure. fuck? She said, I hate to do this. I assume it's a female. Her name was, I can't remember her name. But she said the one in the background that does the Hispanic voices, which is you. Oh, okay. Not me. Just because I did a voice that makes you racist? She said that- I do a white voice all the time, and I, nobody's ever said I hate white people <laughs> when I do. She said you have a racist voice. <laughs> okay. Okay, voices can be racist, I guess. No. Oh, I just got really upset about this. I was sad about it, because I don't like that tag being associated with us. Not at all. We've I've been back to back and fought for my life with people of all different colors. So I went to my dad. I said, Dad, this has really got me bent up. It's got me tore up. I'm not racist. You didn't raise a racist boy. And he said, boy, I like all kinds of races. I like NASCAR races. I like boat races. <laughs> I said, no, Dad. They, they, think, they think I'm prejudiced. He's like, man, they're fucking stupid. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about, boy. Yeah, definitely. I like NASCAR races, boat races. Man, I'll, chances are... If you're listening, I like you. If you don't listen, then I don't like you. I love all of you. Yeah. <laughs> Especially you. You right there. Yeah. You. Yeah. We we'll, we get up to get down if you know what I mean. Yeah. And whoever, yeah, f- fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking bitch. <laughs> I forgot to talk to you about it this week. I knew you'd be upset. And no, that's not me being sexist either. I'm just yeah, calling is. you a bitch right in front of your tits. <laughs> I don't even care. <laughs> Fuck you, I ain't racist. How dare you assume that she has How breasts? How dare you? How dare you assume that it has breasts? <laughs> so, for curses, there's a lot of different curses we could have touched on. We touched on about, I don't know, eight or nine curses here. Touch them. I think <clears throat> that we are cursed. There's a family curse that we've dealt with in the Alexander family that I'll go over a little later. That this okay. The story's been passed down from generations. But the first one, this is a really cool one, and this is from the uh, Ranker website. I And another thing I told Rob this week, I said, Rob, I have no time for research. Rob's been dealing with his wife being down. We just didn't have time for research. So, yeah, so, so we're going to throw week. together some some read stuff, just not a whole lot of research. I wanted to do the bones, the skull and bones society mm-hmm. that the bushes were in, but just I didn't have enough time. And Rob didn't have enough time. So it happens. You're going to get a couple of uh, readings here from, from Ranker. Oh, yeah. Oh, and. Before we start, you said something about families earlier. I wanted to let you know that the last member of our friend Sean's family finally started listening to the podcast is Dad Andy. Oh, really? So, so yeah. So it's a uh, welcome, welcome to the show, motherfucker. Yeah. I so, hope, hopefully, your penis is as big as your son's. <laughs> <laughs> he is. He's an awesome guy. I don't. I don't know what he did. Like in his uh, well. He must have killer genetics because every single one of their kids are gorgeous. Especially Sean. Yeah, especially Sean. <laughs> yeah, they're going to cut his dick off and hang it in the Louvre when he dies. Yeah, they can do that. Marvel at it. The uh, CIA can do that. They will. But well, what's up, Andy? Thanks for listening. Yeah, big guy. I mean it, big guy. <laughs> hey, hey. The poltergeist curse. This is something that I'd never heard of before. And this is from the Ranker website. Poltergeist is one of the most beloved horror movies in American history. It's also rumored to be cursed. Which have you seen that movie before? before? Yeah, it's a it's a pretty scary movie. I th- I think it fucked me up when I was a kid. Oh, definitely. Many of its stars and cast members have met with unfortunate accidents after filming, and some have even died. While it's not the first movie in history to be followed by such rumors, the Poltergeist curse carries more weight because of its unique origins. Horror movies are often connected with frightening circumstances. But the Poltergeist movie, Curse, actually ties into its story. 
The film follows the Freeling family who are assaulted by a collection of nasty spirits. I think they were dealing with more of a a uh, d- a demonic entity than a poltergeist. Yeah, poltergeist just pretty much just fuck with stuff. Yeah, slam door shut. Yeah, they're not really trying to like ream your ass out. Uh, And the family was disturbed by their home because it was built on an old cemetery, but that's not the only place the dead were being uh, desecrated. According to people who worked on the film, the skeletons used in the iconic pool scene were actual human (laughs) remains. Okay. You done fucked up. You you wonder why you got a fucking curse? (laughs) Hey, uh, can I get a different one? This guy's got a boner. <laughs> <laughs> this skeleton's got a boner. That's the dumbest fucking shit I've ever said. I'll make sure not to do a Mexican voice. Oh, this. Yeah. oh no, no, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Stop it. Because the story is explicitly about the problems that arise from disrespecting the dead, there's a pretty compelling argument for why poltergeists would be cursed. Dominique Dune suffered an early violent death. Dominique Dune, she was... Or Dunny, whichever one you want Dunny, to say. Yeah, sorry. She was That's age okay. 23 and... A young lady. She played Dana, the older sister of the Freeling family, was the first of the cast to die in an untimely fashion. Dunny broke up with an abusive boyfriend who later returned to her house to pressure, pressure her into getting back together with him. She refused, and an argument ensued. As the argument escalated, the ex-boyfriend choked her until she passed out and ultimately fell into a coma. Ah, shit. <clears throat> Even worse, the ex-boyfriend boyfriend was released after serving less than four years. That's horseshit. Like Heather O'Rourke, Dunny's untimely death has made many people believers in the curse. There's also Carol Ann. Carol Ann. She's the little blonde-haired girl in the movie, you know? Yeah. She um she was 13 years old when she passed away. Heather O'Rourke, who played Carol Ann in the film franchise, is one of the people most commonly said to be a victim of the poltergeist curse. She'd been diagnosed with Crohn's disease. Ah. Oh, God, shooting poop all over the place. <laughs> I, think, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know what Crohn's disease is. <laughs> I, I just think of someone that can't stop shitting their pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I gotta look it up. Yeah, but that turned out to be a misdiagnosis. In fact, O'Rourke had a bowel obst- okay, a bowel obstruction <laughs> that caused maybe you were septic right. shock. She was full of shit. <laughs> Unfortunately, the symptoms of the shock were in- incorrectly attributed to the flu and not immediately treated, and she died at just twelve years old as the obstruction released toxins into her bloodstream. It is a chronic inflammatory bowel disease that affects the lining of the digestive tract. In other words, you're gonna be shitting. <laughs> You're going to be poop a dooping. <laughs> it can cause abdominal pain, diarrhea, weight loss, anemia, and fatigue. That sounds fucking terrible. Some people may be symptom free all their lives, while others have chronic shits that never go away. That sounds great. Is that the Urban Dictionary definition? No, I bet that Urban Dictionary definition's funny. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Look it up. Real we'll see. Quick. It might be sad. This next one is Julian Beck's. Uh, he was the. He was the old man in the movie with a fucked up face, and he wore a black top hat. Uh, like Will Sampson, Julian Beck's death is not usually attributed to the Poltergeist curse. Beck had been battling cancer all through the filming of the Poltergeist 2, in which he played the evil preacher Kane. He died a few months before the film premiered. Okay, you want to hear what the first one says? Yeah, I do. <laughs> one bitch of a disease. <laughs> Common and causing messed up stomachs, but can in fact be used as an excuse for anything possible. <laughs> I got the Crohn's. Why didn't you do your homework? I have Crohn's. Why did your mom die? She had Crohn's. <laughs> How'd your dad get so smart? He had Crohn's. <laughs> I got the Crohn's. Oh, man. <laughs> I got the Crohn's. He was going to chill with us tonight, but his Crohn's started to flare. Now he can't get off the toilet. I got the crotch Crohn's. <laughs> I got the crotch moans. You know what those are? No, I don't. I'm not going to tell you about okay. those. Okay, damn. Scared. Now we got Richard Lawson's near-death experience <laughs> lends credence to the curse. Richard Lawson, who played Ryan in the original Poltergeist film, is believed to be another victim of the curse. Lawson is still alive and well, but in 1992, he boarded flight 405 to Cleveland. Well, I'd rather fucking oh, kill myself go. than go to Cleveland. <laughs> there, that's your problem. Many passengers on board reported feeling uneasy before the flight. Lawson was bumped up to first class because he is Richard Lawson, you know. <laughs> there you go. After a flight attendant recognized him, a chance encounter that probably saved his life. The plane crashed into a bay after a failed takeoff with its passengers trapped in their seats. Oof. 27 of those people died, including someone in Lawson's original assigned row. 
If he hadn't been bumped up to first class, it might have been him in that seat instead. Man, that's some Final Destination shit. It really is. He, he skipped his turn. <laughs> that's that's it. That's you know how many people he fucked over by doing that? <laughs> <laughs> it was his time to die. You dying? <laughs> and I'm not. <laughs> right. Sorry, my... Uh, okay, we're good. Okay. Lou Perryman was murdered in a random attack. The, though Lou Perryman didn't play a lead role in Poltergeist, he is often considered to be a victim of the curse nonetheless. Perryman played... Pugsley, a construction worker in the first film and was known for his roles in other films, too. In 2009, Seth Christopher Tatum, who was on the run from police, entered Lou Perryman's home and attacked him with an axe. Damn. Tatum, who later turned himself in, said he attacked a man because he needed his car and some other items from inside his home. Uh, but yeah. that that guy played in the Blues Brothers, uh, Boys yeah. Don't Cry, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, Maximum Overdrive, and others. I have never thought of attacking someone with an axe before. <laughs> I have <laughs> thought about it today. <laughs> Jesus. Oliver Robins was attacked by a clown on set. This is kind of fucking creepy. <laughs> Oliver Robins, who played the middle freeling child, Robbie, was reportedly attacked on set by a mechanical clown. In a scene in which he was supposed to be struggling with the creepy clown, it malfunctioned and choked him. <laughs> Holy shit. Because the scene was meant to show a struggle, many members of the cast allegedly thought his reaction was acting and it wasn't until he began to turn blue that they intervened. So here's what here's what I want to know. Was it that much easier to get a mechanical clown than to just dress a person up as a clown? <laughs> we got to build a clown robot. We have nobody that can fit this suit. We don't want this to be too serious, so we're not going to put a real clown on you. Oh. We want to put a fake clown on you. That makes no sense to me. We want to make a clown with artificial intelligence <laughs> something that can choke the fuck out of you if you act up too much <laughs> maybe there's something i'm forgetting that the reason why it was mechanical that's really weird man. i don't know that yeah. Ro- <laughs> robin survived the attack and is alive and well today so not everyone's dead and then you have the indian will sampson um though will sampson who played the native american shaman taylor he had a really good role in that movie in the second poltergeist film did die after the film's disease his death was probably unrelated to the curse. Samson had a degenerative condition called scleroderma. 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 No, scleroderma. That's what I said. That scleroderma. Okay. That, Shabbat I don't know. I can't tell from this far away. Which caused him to lose weight rapidly and become ah, malnourished. That sucks. But there's... Uh, okay, and then there's Joe Beth Williams. She's the one that's caught in the fucking slime in, yeah. the, in the in-ground pool with the skeletons. She reported strange events at her home. Jo Beth Williams, who played the mother of the Freeling family, acted in the infamous scene with the reportedly real human skeletons. Though tragedy or accident didn't befall her in the same way that it did many of the many of her other co-stars, Williams did report odd incidents during the film. Specifically, Williams recalled an odd nervous feeling on set that dissipated after Samson performed the exorcism, which he was the Indian. Anytime you get an, <laughs> an exorcism from an Indian, you fucking, you're fucked. <laughs> Further, she said that she'd often return home from a day shooting to find that all of her pictures in her house tilted. Ugh. After straightening, the, straightening them, she'd return the next day to find them all crooked again. Um, there was a report of an extremely frightening lightning strike that startled many people on set. Is there no such thing as unfrightening lightning? Yeah, I... I, my dogs are completely terrified of lightning. Lightning's scary, dude. Ace will fuck the house up <laughs> if there's lightning. We're, he's, yeah. he's 14 and we're still Thunder Buddies. We, we, we had a beagle that was just like that loud noises. like And they're hunting dogs, which is weird. Fourth of July, he hid under a car and didn't come out for like six hours. Oh, he didn't like lightning either. As the Poltergeist curse did not end with the original three films, Gil Keenan, who directed the 2015 franchise reboot, was actually looking for the curse. <laughs> According to Keenan, he, he found it. The film was plagued by strange equipment failures on one plot of land, and the director also reported that the house he stayed in while filming was haunted by a female figure in a black dress. No. The figure, he said, would follow him to and from the set, though it thankfully did not return to Los Angeles with him when filming wrapped. And those are some curses, some things directly linked to the poltergeist curse that I knew nothing about. No, not at all. Mm. Um, that, like we've said before, all that stuff adds up to being, there's something fucking going on right there, man. Yeah, when you swim with skeletons, <laughs> human skeletons, that'll, 
I'll do I it. Laid in the bath of dead babies last <laughs> night. Do you think I'm gonna be in fucking trouble? <laughs> Help me! Help me! Dude, that'd be so scary. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. What if every time you jerked off, the, the semen's had a chance to try and talk you in and not oh, throw them away? No. Oh. It would do like millions of little voices. Please. You're so fat, you're never going to find anybody to be friends with you ever. You're so fat and nasty. <laughs> There's oh, three God. of them that just went down your butthole and they're dead already. <laughs> No one's ever going to love you except for me. Save me. Save me, Rob Dog. Oh, my gosh. Have you ever tasted <laughs> us before? You never chased, tasted your own sperm in the shower before? <laughs> Not mine, just other people's. <laughs> yeah, I taste mine all the time. It's fine. I don't like to have it after I've had pizza. It's really bitter taste. Yeah, that makes sense. Or orange juice. I'll eat the shit out of that stuff after I had Fruity Pebbles, though. That makes everything taste good. I try and offer it to everybody that'll take a drink. <laughs> Guy at the gas station. <laughs> so gross. Hey, try some of this jizz, boy. <laughs> try some of this jizz, fat boy. <laughs> this next one's from mentalfloss.com. I would pass this one off to you, but I had this one all over the place, so I'll okay. pass the next one to you. That's fine. This is the story of the Hope Diamond. And oh, this yeah. This is a pretty cool story. I've never heard it before, ever. You've heard about this before? No, but I know about the Hope Diamond, <laughs> so I'm, I'm kind of there. All right. <laughs> you ever had a poop diamond before? No, that'd be cool. That's where you poop and it hurts really bad. Oh, never mind. That wouldn't be cool. I just pooped a bunch of diamonds. That's what it is. Yeah. kind of the same, same premise there. Yeah, right. And now, maybe a quick message from some of our sponsors. Maybe not. I don't know if they'll put it in there. I don't know. On September 11th, rest in peace, 1792, the Hope Diamond was stolen from the house that stored the crown jewels. Pretty fascinating little bubble, particularly if you're the sort of person who's impressed by 45.52 carat gems, but you probably wouldn't want to own it as it's supposedly cursed. Fuck that, I'll own it. The story goes that the curse began when Tavernier Blue, which was the precursor to several large diamonds, including the Hope Diamond. Take this with a grain of salt because it's never been proved. Uh, Jean-Baptiste Tavernier stole the 115-carat blue oh diamond God. from an, <laughs> took it from an Hindu, stat, uh, Hindu statue. Go down there and fetch me the lamp. <laughs> <laughs> It's so stupid. Where it was serving as one of the eyes on the Hindu sta- statue. Upon discovering it was missing, priests <laughs> fucked him relentlessly. <laughs> oh, priests put a curse on him. Put a curse on whoever was in possession of the gem, which has included a fair amount of people over the years. So the first we have John Baptiste Tavernier. After this person came into uh, possession of the the Hope Diamond. The story goes that the French gem merchant Jean-Baptiste Tavernier came down with a raging fever soon after stealing the diamond, and after he died, his body was possibly ravaged by wolves. Jeez. However, other reports say that he might have lived to the age of 84. So who knows? Nonetheless, and you got King Louis, what is this, King Louis the Fourteenth? Yeah, that looks right. Bought the stone from Tavernier and had it recut in 1673. Okay. It was then known as the Blue Diamond of the Crown or the French Blue. And also, if you're offered the French Blue by a streetwalker while you're in France, don't partake in that shit because it's going to taste like some old fermented beef jerky. (laughs) Wouldn't recommend it. Zero out of two stars. (laughs) King Louis died of gangrene, and all of his legitimate children died in childhood, except for one, (laughs) which the article, the Mental Floss article, says that's pretty common for the times. After After King Louis had this diamond, Nicholas Fouquet, (laughs) fuck it, fuck it, Fouquet, F-O-U-Q-E-T, Fouquet, Fouquet. Nicholas Fouquet, who worked for King Louis, is said to have worn the diamond for a special occasion. Shortly thereafter, he fell out of favor with the king and was banished from France. The king then changed this sentence to life imprisonment, so fuck it, spent 15 <laughs> years in the fortress of Pignigrol. Pignigrol. <laughs> Some people believe that he was the real man in the Iron Mask. Huh. Oh, that's pretty interesting. <clears throat> 
And then number four and five, uh, King Louis the Sixteenth and Marie Antoinette inherited the French blue. Marie Antoinette wore the diamond, but the, Marie Antoinette she was the queen of England or she was the queen of France. And then the revolution, they fucking took her out of the fucking office right there. They killed that bitch. Cut her fucking head off. Yeah, with a guillotine. Yeah, guillotine. Dude, that's God. such a sweet way to die. That's how I want to die, for sure. Right, for, for serious. I want the um, I want the, the executioner from Clash Royale to cut my head off. <laughs> so dope. If any of, We've never put this out there before. No, no, we haven't. If any of you are in a Clash Royale into that game, Rob and I play that shit about four to five hundred times a day. It's the only game that I consistently am going back to. Yeah, I've never got off of it. No, I mean, that, that's the same, but I mean, I'll download a bunch of games and get really into them. Yeah. But that game's always there. So we're in a clan called Clasher Nasher. It's two words. It's C-L-A-S-H-E-R. And then Nasher is G-N-A-S-H-E-R. So come join us. Be like, hey, I'm here to check out Nick and Rob. We suck, so. He is Rob, and I'm Cat Slayer. Yeah. <laughs> it, was it was Pussy Slayer. It was Pussy Slayer, and then... Uh, they just changed it without him even knowing it. Supercell turned it t- into fucking Gray Rock. <laughs> I said, hey... I don't like this one at all. <laughs> they said, all right, how about Cat Slayer? Said, all right. So after Marie Antoinette had it, it went to uh, Marie, Mary Louise Princess de Lamballe. I Holy s- shit. Jesus Christ, dude. I'm fucking butchering these. <laughs> I feel so bad. It's so, just so white. <laughs> Marie was a member of Marie Antoinette's court and was her closest confidant. I got that one. There you go. She was killed by a mob in a most horrific fashion, apparently hit with a hammer. Oh, shit. Decapitated, stripped, and disemboweled, among other things. Oof. Her head was impaled on a pike and carried to Marie Antoinette's prison window. Damn, dude. Then, after... These people had no chill back in the days. <laughs> right. And the... It, it passed hands a few more times, and then it went to the hands of Wilhelm Fowles. He was a Dutch jeweler who recut the diamond again into several pieces. His son ended up murdering him after he handled the diamond. Jeez. Then it goes to Simon Monsherides. He was a Greek merchant who owned the diamond. His curse, he drove his car over a cliff and killed himself, his wife, and his children. Then the diamond went into the hands of Evelyn Walsh McLean, she was a spoiled Harris who lived a charmed life until she bought the Hope Diamond. She happily wore the diamond, and there are even stories that she would affix the jewel to her dog's <laughs> collar. Jeez. And let him, it, was a, uh, it was a great day. Talk about having like money just to <laughs> fucking do whatever with. Yeah, dude. The Hope Diamond to put it on your dog's collar. Yeah, put this fucking thing on. I, I hope it was. Fuck. I hope it was like a Chihuahua, so it was like weighed down in the front. Its back legs couldn't oh, even touch the ground because yeah. the diamond's so heavy. <laughs> I think I did read it. It was a, a Saint or a, a Great Dane. Sorry. Okay. And she let the dog wander around her apartment with it. But wearing the Hope Diamond came at a steep price. First, her mother-in-law died. Her (laughs) son died at the age of nine. Oh, my gosh. Her husband left her for another woman and later died in a mental hospital. Her daughter died of a drug overdose at 25, and she eventually had to sell her newspaper, the Washington Post. Oh, gosh. And died owing huge debts. Evelyn's surviving kids sold the diamond to Harry Winston. Nine years later, Winston mailed the gem to the Smithsonian for $2.44 in postage and $155 in insurance. (laughs) But wait, Rob. What a steal. It gets better. The postage handler that took the goddamn thing to the Smithsonian, James Todd, he had his fucking leg crushed in a truck accident shortly after handling the diamond. He suffered a head injury in a separate accident, and his fucking house burned down. (laughs) All the people. These are all people they handle the same diamond. Holy shit. Give me that thing. <laughs> I've had a crazy. really bad week. Let me tote that booger out of my pocket. <laughs> Speaking of dogs, I, she's going to kill me for telling this story. But this week, Stacy calls me and she said, there's something wrong with Bruce. Yes, we have a dog named Bruce. He's the weirdest fucking animal that I've ever met in my entire life. Super smart, but just completely space cadetted out. He's, yeah, he's a spaz. so out there. But yeah. he's such a good, good dog, a loving, sweet dog. 
this dog was never fixed because I wanted to breed him. But then I found out how <laughs> fucking weird and like fucked up he was. I'm like, there's no way I'm breeding this dog. So I never got him fixed. He's got yeah. a big old ball sack. Not a big ball. He's a border collie, not a big ball sack. Yeah. Just a good furry nut sack on him. <laughs> and sh- but this dog will lick his penis. Oh, yeah. So loudly. Yeah, we talked about this the other day. It'll wake me up in the middle of the night. <laughs> Just squirting you can hear it hitting like squirting on the walls and shit and he will just like uh, alpha male stare at me when he is coming too it's the weirdest thing not even but, giving a shit but she calls me at work and she says there's something wrong with bruce and I, I want you guys to understand something ace i got ace when i was 18 he's my heart and soul when it comes to animals bruce came about two years later so i'm kind of like okay what's wrong with him? <laughs> if it's ace i'm busting out of the door at work and run home but Bruce has had so much stuff wrong with him over the years that amounted to nothing. I'm just like, okay, what's wrong with him? She's like, his, his thing is stuck out. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what <laughs> thing? She said, yeah, his uh, his lipstick. Like his, I was like, oh, it's like his penis is stuck out. She said, yeah, he won't stop licking it. It's bleeding. It won't go back in. Oh, my gosh. I'm like, oh, it's bleeding. Fuck. So I call the vet. And they're like, yeah, the best thing you can do is rub Vaseline on it and push it back inside. Oh, no! <laughs> and I didn't even think about calling Stacy back to tell her, like, oh. you're going to have to put, put his dick back up inside of him. <laughs> Don't have to grab that dick and roll it back up. Lube it up and shove it in. So then I, she let him outside to go to the bathroom. Everything went back to normal. So then we call my dad later on to pretend like he has to come over and push <laughs> the dick back in. Because anytime I'm in peril or trouble, I call my father. Dad, I need you to touch my yeah. my dog's dick. I just called the vet. <laughs> Someone needs to come push his dick back up inside of him, and I can't do it. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> get your shit out of luck. That's what he said. He was that no. Usually he's he says, all right, boy, I'll be right there to help you. This time he said, you're on your own with that dog dick. <laughs> you ain't getting no help with that dog dick. Oh, jeez. Could you imagine if humans had dick like dogs? God, <laughs> so ugly. So nasty. I mean, dicks aren't aesthetically pleasing anyways, but They're it'd be not. even worse. The Lord blessed dogs with a dick that looks like a tongue. <laughs> That's the only way to s- It looks like a... A dick tongue. It looks like an infected tongue. Yeah, it really does. I don't get it. Oh, my gosh. Uh-uh. This one we can probably skip past. It's the Madden. Oh curse. yeah, the the cover curse. Um, I can I can shoot through it real quick. Okay, here. yeah, yeah. In 1999, Garrison Hurst was the first player to be on the Madden cover, and a, a lot of people have never heard of the Madden curse, and a lot of people have. Madden is the only football video game that's mattered for the past three yeah. decades. Um, but Garrison Hurst was the first football player on the cover. He broke his ankle in the playoffs that year and set out two years after he broke his ankle. And never really came back. In the year 2000, Barry Sanders, the baddest motherfucker ever, oh, yeah. was on the cover. Right before the season started, he said, nah, fam, I'm good. I'm not playing this year. He retired. So they changed the cover halfway through the year to Dorsey Levins. He hurt his knee that year and was out a bunch of games. 2002, Dante Culpepper. Um, let's see here. He... Yeah, he suffered a severe knee injury that year as well, and he had a lot of weapons around him that year, like Randy Moss, and mm-hmm. they were just poised to you know kill everybody. They only went four and seven, and he just like he never really bounced back that well from from this injury. Flash forward to the next year, Marshall Falk, who was part of the greatest show on turf, had an ankle injury after being on the cover, and it never and he never really returned to his form either. Two thousand four, <laughs> Mike Vick, <laughs> we know how that went. The day after Madden was released with him on the cover, he broke his goddamn fibula, and he was out 11 games. Good. He's also needs to be... Uh, needs to be put down. <laughs> yeah, take that however you want. <laughs> he needs to let Ray Lewis go down on him. <laughs> Speaking of Ray Lewis... He was on the cover in 2005, broke his wrist. 2006, Donovan McNabb was on the cover. He got a goddamn hernia the first game oh. of the season and missed seven games. The next year, 2007, Sean Alexander fractured his foot and missed six games. He was never the same after his injury. Then in 2008, the next year, Vince Young, he was on... There was someone else that was supposed to be on the cover that year. can't remember who it was. Mm, Someone else is supposed to be on the cover, and that person's like... Nah, fam, fuck that. I'm not going to be on the Madden cover. So then they they gave it to Vince Young. Um... He injured his quad that year, and, and he just sucked after that injury. But then he went on to 
there was a like he got in a bunch of cursing, shouting matches with his teammates, and they fucking hated him. But he also went on suicide match and he or suicide watch. Suicide watch. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> suicide match. <laughs> and he quit on his team, and his fucking teammates hated him. Yeah, and skipped a year, so skipped two thousand nine. Yeah, and went to 2010 when Troy Polamalu and Larry Fitzgerald, they put two people on the cover that year thinking they would try to avoid the <laughs> the, the Madden. <laughs> right. Right. Polamalu only played in five games because of num- numerous knee injuries, and the Steelers didn't make the playoffs, which they always make the playoffs. Talk about the most beautiful hair ever. I fucking hate them. And then Larry Fitzgerald wasn't affected by the curse during the regular season, but when the playoffs rolled around, he suffered a rib injury that kept him out of the postseason. So, the Madden curse is real, my friend. It definitely sounds like it's it. Well, at least real. in the early 2000s. Yeah. Those first 10 years of the 2000s. Get down with it. So, Rob Dog, tell me about James Dean and the Little Bastard. Oh, yeah. James Dean and the Little Bastard. Let me get that here. So, on September 30th, 1955, James Dean was killed when the silver Porsche 550 Spider he called Little Bastard was struck by an oncoming vehicle. That's my nickname for the kids. <laughs> for my wiener. For all three of them. Come here, you little bastard. Come here, you little bastard, you little shit. Within about a year of Dean's crash, the car was at least loosely involved in two more fatal accidents and two other injuries. So the better confirmed series of incidents occurred after hot rod designer George Barris purchased the car. Now, while getting a tune-up, Little Bastard fell on a mechanic's leg (laughs) and broke them. Well, legs, so it broke both legs. The doctor supposedly purchased the engine and transmission from the car, or two doctors did. Um, Wait, hang on. Okay, there we go. Sorry. Two doctors supposedly purchased the engine and transmission from the car, of whom one was killed and the other seriously injured in subsequent car accidents. Though it hasn't been confirmed that the deaths occurred in the car that contained the little bastard's part. So they could have just been coincidence. Bad luck. Someone else had purchased the tires, which blew simultaneously, sending the driver to the hospital. So from there, reports get a little bit more muddled. We know that Little Bastard's shell disappeared sometime before 1960 while on an exhibition circuit. According to some, a truck carrying it crashed, killing the driver, and Little Bastard was gone by the time the authorities arrived on scene. That's fucking (laughs) wild. So by other accounts, it was merely stolen en route. Either way, perhaps it was for the best that the Little Bastard is off the roads. I just love saying little bastard. Yeah, I know. That's wild, dude. They got there and the car was just gone. That's crazy. That's pretty good stuff. It's just cra- yeah, it's crazy that like so many different things could be attributed to parts from yeah. that car. And some of you are probably wondering why my wife loves me so much. That's because I have blue chew that's right b-l-u-e-c-h-e-w you can have your own blue chew if you go to bluechew.com they have a special promo code for you bro ohio that's gonna get you your first shipment free of blue chew but what is blue chew you ask it's gonna give you the power and the drive and the urge to go time and time again that's right guys get that extra that you need to take her to the limits it's got the same active ingredients as cialis as viagra you get it in a little blue chewable pill you can take it with an empty stomach you can take it with the full stomach so you can make her stomach feel real good if you get a shipment of blue chew send us a screenshot to brohio podcast at gmail.com we're going to send you some free stickers, but use the promo code BROHIO. You're going to get your first shipment free. All you got to cover is the cost of shipping. No awkward doctor visits in a doctor's office. Everything is handled discreetly online and even comes to you in a very discreet package, so you don't have to worry about any embarrassment from the apartment neighbor lady. Hey, uh, you got a problem with your wiener? No, I just got blue chew. I'm ready to make the difference in my life in my lover's life. So if you want to try Blue Chew, guys, go to bluechew.com, B-L-U-E, chew.com. Use the promo code BROHIO for your free shipment. But the, whoever the dumb fucker was that took the tires off of a 
car that was fucking totaled, they deserve to wreck and go to the hospital. Right. You're fucking oh, stupid. Yeah, these tires look real good. I put these on my Model T. We'll drive them down to the drive-in. Remember last time I went to drive-in, you sucked my dick. You're drunk. You puked in my lap. That was fucking gross. We better try it again. Uh, you, you ever had anyone puke in your lap before? No, never. <laughs> No, besides never. me. Yeah. <laughs> just you. Just you. I've never had anybody puke on me besides, you know, one of the kids, but... <laughs> yeah, it's a, that, that happens. Was, that's the worst. Yeah. This next one's called The Curse of Tippecanoe, which we live about five minutes from Tippecanoe here. <laughs> well, or they also call this Tecumseh's Curse. It's a widely spread explanation for why... From 1840 to 1960, every U.S. president elected or re-elected every 20th year has died in office. Rumor has it that the Native American leader Tecumseh administered the curse when William Henry Harrison's troops defeated his forces at the Battle of Tippecanoe. William Henry Harrison was elected president in 1840. He caught a cold during his inauguration. What <laughs> fucking world is that read? I died from a cold. <laughs> Come back as a ghost. Thank you for electing me president, but I have on caught the, a cold. On the Ouija board, how did you die? <laughs> the cold. Cold. I'll turn up the thermostat. Just tell us how you died. <laughs> cold. Okay, I'll get there. The cold quickly turned into a pneumonia. He died on April 4th, 1841, after only one month in office. <laughs> Flash forward 20. People from the 1800s sucked. They did. <laughs> your, their health sucked. If you're from the 1800s and you're listening to this, fuck your immune system. <laughs> I don't think there's many of those left. Okay. <laughs> Maybe one or two. Hey, what's it like to, to be superior, <laughs> that, for us to be superior to you? We got yeah. we got the coronavirus, but... The crotch coronas. The, cr- the crotch crickets. Now, this in this... Uh, curse here it says that every pre- the president you're le- elected every 20 years has something go wrong with him uh abraham lincoln lincoln who was elected 20 years after william henry harrison in 1860, 1860. Mm-hmm. and was re-elected four years later lincoln was shot on april 14th 1865 and died the next day thanks yep. a lot lee harvey Oswald. <laughs> james garfield <laughs> who was elected president in 1880, 20 years after Abe, Charles Guiteau shot him in July 1881. Garfield died several months later from complications following the gunshot wound. William McKinley was elected president in 1896, so this is a 16-year, a but he was re-elected in 1900, which was goes along the course here of every 20 years. On September 6, 1901, McKinley was shot by Leon... <laughs> No, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that name. He was Salk. shot by a guy named Leon. <laughs> Leon C Z. I was about to say zero. Skulls. C Z O L G O S Z. Say it how you would like. Skulls. <laughs> Who considered the president an enemy of the of the people? McGinley died eight days later. Three years later, after Warren G. Harding was elected president. Yes, you're right. Twenty years later, in 1920. He died suddenly of a heart attack or stroke while traveling in San Francisco. <laughs> okay, rank, flash forward another 20 years. Franklin D. Roosevelt was elected president in 32, 36, 40, and 44, so the 40 would be 20 years later. Mm-hmm. Although his health wasn't great overall, he died rather suddenly in 1945 of a cerebral hemorrhage or stroke. Was he the one that was the bad motherfucker? Uh, no, that was Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt. There you go. Never yeah. mind. Franklin D- Franklin D. was a bad motherfucker, but Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy was the bad he was motherfucker. Rough, he was a rough writer. And yeah, shit. yeah, yeah that, that's right. <clears throat> so then we go forward another 20 years. And <laughs> we know what happens here. 60, um, he drowned and suffocated while eating out Marilyn Monroe. And- that's a hell of a way to go, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Sign me up. But obviously we all know what happened to John F. Kennedy, uh, yeah. but he was elected in 1960. He was assassinated in Dallas three years later by John Wilkes Booth. The Kennedy curse is its own thing anyways. That's <laughs> Yes, it is, which is what we cover next. Then we flash forward another 20 years. Dude, how fucking crazy is this? It's crazy. Ronald Reagan, who was elected president in 1980, and though he was shot by an assassin in 1981, he did survive. Some say this broke the curse. George W. Bush, who was yeah. elected in 2000, escaped, except for he nearly died from a fucking pretzel. They wanted to serve for a second term in office. So this begs the question. We're coming up on an election year. Oh, shit. Whoever gets elected this year, 
Uh, hopefully that motherfucker's broken. I'm not going to say anything bad because I know we got bad people listening to us. I don't wish. I mean, our, if it's if it's Bernie, we already know he's going out and he's not going to make it too long. Natural causes. He's too old. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do love Bernie. Joe though. Rogan's back at him. So <laughs> it's all good. I love Bernie. Yeah. Uh, the next one is the is the Kennedy curse, which you've, we've done an episode on the Kennedy yeah, curse. Yeah, we did. I'll let Rob run you through the Kennedy curse real quick. Yeah, I'm sure everybody's kind of familiar with this. So regardless, the number of Kennedy family tragedies have led some to believe there must be a curse on the whole bunch, which I do believe there is. So John F. Kennedy's brother, Joseph Jr., and sister Kathleen both died in separate plane crashes. This is in 1944 and 1948, respectively. So JFK, of course, while serving as America's 35th president, was assassinated in 63 at the age of 46. Still young as hell. Um, Robert Kennedy, who was JFK's younger brother, was assassinated in 1968. Senator Ted Kennedy, JFK's youngest brother, survived a plane crash in 64. But in 1969, he was driving a car that went off of a bridge, causing his de- uh, the death of his companion, Mary Jo Kopechny. Nailed it. Good enough. And ending his presidential goals during the investigation that followed. In 84, Robert Kennedy's son, David, died of a drug overdose. Another son, Michael, died in a skiing accident in 19- 1997. In the arms of the <laughs> And then in 1999, which I still remember this, JFK Jr., his wife, and his sister-in-law died when the small plane he was piloting crashed into the Atlantic Ocean. Isn't that wild, man? Yeah. The family is definitely fucking cursed. Yeah, especially, like, well, during during this time especially. Yeah. That's so wild. Yeah. And to go back to the Tecumseh thing again real quick, the, there's a, f- a story that's been passed down in my family that my great, great, Great grandfather, Percy Alexander. Alexander the Great? <laughs> no, Percy. Okay. <laughs> came here. Uh, he was. He. This is during the gold rush and whenever everything, okay. everything was exploding and whatnot. Right. And he worked at the. The story is that he worked at the local saloon as a milker. Do you know what a milker is? <laughs> no, do tell. I'll tell you about that later. <laughs> so. <laughs> What the people knew about Percy is he would constantly go up and down the steps of the saloon, and no one really knew what he was. <laughs> Why is it, are you giving me that fucking face? You're rolling your eyes. I'm just waiting. Okay. <laughs> Whatever, man. If you don't believe my fucking stories anymore, it's fine. <laughs> so okay. the, the people would said that he would constantly travel up and down the steps, and they never really knew what he was doing. But from traveling up and down the steps, he got really big fucking thighs <laughs> okay. and a really plump big ass. Good for him. My grandpa Percy. So <laughs> the problem was working out your glutes and your thighs like that, they get really they get really big. Right. Really just strong and big. So his pants were always really, really tight. He had pants that were just way too tight. Yeah. And they all the other patrons of the saloon could always see his dick and balls because his pants are so tight. So they gave him the nickname uh Pork knuckle Percy. <laughs> okay. Or they just call him Pork Knuckle for sure. <laughs> for sure. Because it's, uh, they said he had a big old set of balls on him, so they just called him Pork Knuckle, and Camel Toe didn't really get it across. So they called yeah, him yeah. Pork Knuckle. <laughs> he had a big old pig's hoof down there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Grandpa Pork Knuckle, he would, there was a, and so what the job of a milker was. These cowboys would come in from, you know, the doing whatever they do as cowboys, and they would mm-hmm. come in. <laughs> Quit fucking with me right now, man. <laughs> and after a hard day of getting your asshole beat up on the back of a horse, oh, yeah. you would need a good milking. So what they would do is they would go to the saloon, they would go upstairs, and Grandpa Pork Knuckle would go up there. <laughs> Just hold on a second. Give me a second to speak, all right? <laughs> Grandpa Pork Knuckle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, or uh, some people they they would actually call him Uncle Pork Knuckle because <laughs> Grandpa was too affectionate. Okay, so Uncle Pork Knuckle would go up and give him a good milking. If and this is where I'm circling back. What do you think a milking is? After riding the the wild frontier, having your asshole beat the smithereens on the back of a horse, <laughs> and you need a good milking, what do you think a milking is? The prostate, man. No, Jesus fucking Christ, Rob. He would fill up a bathtub full of milk, and then they would relax in this bathtub full of milk. It really helped 
oh, pull man. everything back together. So you're a fucking <laughs> sicko. And Keep then, the skin nice and soft. <laughs> yeah. So subtle. after they got out of the, the bath, uh, Uncle Pork Knuckle would jerk them off. <laughs> so that was part of the milking. You were kind of right a okay. little bit about the, okay. the milking. <laughs> and one day they had an Indian come in that they couldn't quite understand what he was asking. They thought that he was his asshole was, was obliterated from mm-hmm. riding bareback on the horses out there. So yeah. then Uncle Pork Knuckle, Grandpa Pork Knuckle, followed him up to the, <laughs> the milking room. And he never really dealt with an Indian before. So he kind of did things in reverse order, and he started trying to jerk the Indian off. Okay. The Indian didn't want jerked off. He just he just wanted a drink at the bar. So the Indian put a curse on my family. Uh he took one look at Uncle Pork Knuckle and saw how f- <laughs> he had that fucking apple bottom and the big old thighs, and he mm-hmm. cursed the rest of the family. That's why we got big asses and big ah. old fat thighs. Because Percy Pork Knuckle, back in the 1840s, great, 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 great grandfather, okay, he was doing the milking, and he tried to milk an Indian, and the Indian wasn't on that gay shit. He said, ah. get, the f-. He said get the fuck out of here. <laughs> get out of here. Bull come. <laughs> Ooh, come. If that doesn't get our fucking one-star racist review, I'm going to be so pissed. <laughs> Bull, come. How do you know? Ear sticky. <laughs> you remember that joke? Yeah. yeah, yeah ne- so, never gets old. So. <laughs> never forget. Uh, if one thing that we've opened up is on Facebook now, you can leave us reviews on Facebook. Oh, okay. Cool. So go to Facebook and leave us a, a review or a, I think it's a, a recommendation. Say, uh, say you're here. To, say you're here because your ear's sticky. <laughs> say, <laughs> just make a reference to, to Uncle Pork Knuckle. Yeah, Uncle Pork Knuckle. The brave Uncle Pork, Pork Knuckle. Yeah. Grandpa Pork Knuckle. <sighs> if you have a Pork Knuckle, don't email us because my Please wife don't. checks that shit and I'll have to fucking answer for it. I don't want to have to answer for it. <laughs> Because I don't need that negativity in my life. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> the next one's Tamerlane's curse. This is another curse. This is not. This is not like the Alexander Pork Knuckle <laughs> curse. This is a little bit different. Okay. In 1941, a team of Soviet anthropologists traveled to Uzbekistan on a state-sanctioned expedition. Their mission, as approved by Stalin himself, ah. was lo- was to locate the tomb of. Tamerlane and exhume the body inside. <laughs> That's yeah. Good luck yeah, with that, dickhead. Fuck. Tamerlane was an infamous 14th century warlord who is seen as a national hero in Uzbekistan. That's just asking for a curse. It is, and you'll see that it gets much better from here. Great. As such, members of the local Muslim clergy desperately tried to stop the exhumation. <laughs> they warned that if the warlord's sleep was disturbed, <laughs> his sleep. <laughs> Disaster would follow on the third day. Okay. Mikhail like Jesus. Ger- Ger- Gerasimov, the leader of the expedition, dismissed their warning as a local superstition and oversaw the exhumation of Tamerlane on June 19, 1941. The decision of the Soviet anthropologist to open the tomb could be seen as either brave or foolhardy. Foolhardy. <laughs> yeah. On the outside of the casket was an inscription which read, Here lies Pork Knuckle. <laughs> <laughs> No, so it said, quote, <laughs> when I rise from the dead, the world shall tremble. Three days later, Nazi Germany launched Operation Barbosa and invaded the Soviet Union in a surprise attack. Way to fucking go. Some people still believe Stalin invoked the wrath of Tamerlane when the Soviet anthropologist exhumed the warlord's body with the Nazi invasion was a direct result of Tamerlane's curse. It's interesting to note that the turning point in the German-Soviet War came with a surprise victory in the Battle of Stalingrad. And what happened right before the battle? Stalin ordered Tamerlane's skeleton to be reinterred in Uzbekistan <laughs> with full Islamic burial rites. The curse was supposedly lifted, but not before it had exacted a terrible toll. Although the Soviets eventually emerged victorious, Germany... Germany's invasion resulted in the death of seven and a half million <laughs> Russians. Damn. Man, there's a lot of missing vodka right there, buddy. Right. Yeah. Here lies pork knuckle. <laughs> <laughs> if you disturb my sleep, you shall be milked. Got me a big old ball sack. <laughs> and a thick ass. Take a look at this big old ball sack. Where's pork knuckle? I need, my, I need milked. <laughs> I need milked. 
I need a good milking. I have nipples, Rob. Can you milk me? <laughs> You're just saying you're going to milk somebody. It sounds so nasty. It does. <laughs> oh, I tell him when I check out, as long as I get like a nice young boy at Kroger, I walk up and I'm just like, you ain't ready to pay for my groceries. I just stare at him and I say, I'm going to milk you. <laughs> and I put down like two gallons of 2%. <laughs> and I pay for that shit and I walk out. Oh, man. I thought it's about to get my wiener sucked. <laughs> If you're listening to this, and if you have parents, call your parents tonight and ask them if they want milked. Let us know how that goes. <laughs> we could we could call my mom. <laughs> oh God, I hey. want to milk you, mama. So you know, you know, great, 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 great grandpa Percy. <laughs> <laughs> you want to milking? <laughs> Let's call my dad and ask him about that story. I completely made that story up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just go with it. <laughs> okay, you know. <laughs> Yeah, we'll call him real quick. We'll see if this, uh... Like, Nick, are you fucking stupid? <laughs> oh, who's that guy? Oh, damn, it's one of these. Hello? Yeah, hello? Yes, sir? What's going on? Uh, I'm going to play cards. Oh, that must be nice. Strip poker? I don't know. I played cards with, uh, Eddie and Roger and... Ron and Jason for next year. Don't lose too much money. I'm not going to. I'll both I can lose thirty bucks. Okay. Hey, you remember that story you used to tell me about an uncle pork knuckle I had? <laughs> um <laughs> Bigly. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to remember the story it's something about an uncle pork knuckle that used to milk Indians. It's like an old. Or did you make that shit up? Uh, I might have made it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Have you ever milked another man before? Uh, let me think about this. Fuck no. <laughs> All right. All right. I was trying to show. It was this is for Rob. Uh, I'll I'll talk. I'll talk to oh, you. Some of your bad fucking habits you're trying to say. <laughs> That's not. Was that a gay joke? <laughs> All right, I gotta go. Okay. But <laughs> he wasn't biting. No, he wasn't biting very hard. Uh, vaguely, you remember? <laughs> he had no funny. fucking clue. It's funny because he tells me such bullshit. <laughs> that he's probably like, I might have told him about. I might have told him. I told him about Uncle Pork Knuckle before. <laughs> Oh man, he's so might funny. Have, might have told him about Uncle Pork. No oh right, man, right before I was going to finger him. <laughs> to tell him about the curse of. We didn't make this up either. No curse of dead man's chair. Yeah, that sounds pretty sweet. So the Thirsk Museum in England is home to the infamous chair of Thomas Busby. The museum has mounted the chair on a wall to prevent anyone from sitting on it. Get out of my chair! <laughs> Not because the chair is particularly valuable, but because a curse that dates back to the 18th century. Now, legend has it that anyone who dares sit in Busby's stoop chair <laughs> will die soon after. Dude, stoop is like the best. I can't hear that and not think of Hey Arnold. But the guy's name's Busby. Busby. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, buddy. hey, buddy, why don't you get out of my fucking chair real quick? I'm trying to sit down in that fucking chair. You know that everybody sits in that stoop chair, they die, so I get the fuck out of that chair if you don't mind. So this all started in North Yorkshire back in 1702. Now somehow the town drunk, a man by the name of Thomas Busby, managed to marry the beautiful Elizabeth Audie. She sounds pretty. She does sound really pretty. However, her father was vehemently opposed to the marriage. As though his daughter could do better. <laughs> that's, that's fucked up. You mean to tell me that you're dating Thomas Busby, the drunken man inside the chair. I've never been so appalled in my entire life. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> One day, Busby returned to find his father-in-law sitting in his favorite chair. Oh, dude. Now, Audie announced 
that he was there to take his daughter home. So Busby did what any totally reasonable man would do. Shit in the chair. He he bludgeoned his father in law of death with a hammer and oh, hid the body. Okay, good. Under the chair. Under the chair. <laughs> Under the wooden rocking chair. As, as he was being led to his execution, he reportedly shouted that anyone who sat in his favorite chair <laughs> would die. The inn where Busby lived with his wife was renamed the Busby Stoop Inn. <laughs> It's the ultimate motherfucking seat check. <laughs> yes, yeah, right. And the chair has supposedly claimed an untold number of lives over the past 300 years. In 1968, Tony Earnshaw took over the inn. Earnshaw was not a superstitious man, so he initially dismissed the Busby curse as nonsense and the previous deaths associated with it to be coincidences, which I totally get that. But then people started dying on his watch. <laughs> First, Earnshaw overheard two RAF, I don't know what that abbreviation is for. Um, Royal Air Force. There you go. Her overheard two Royal Air Force airmen daring each other to sit on the chair. Oh, well, dare you to sit in the chair, why don't you? <laughs> Last guy that sat there, he got fucking bludgeoned to death by a dick. Go ahead, wanker. <laughs> so both did, of course, and both died in a car crash <laughs> later Jesus. that day. So this curse is fast acting. There, Then there was a group of builders who came into the pub at lunchtime and dared a young laborer to sit on the chair. <laughs> You're going to die today, They're, motherfucker. It's like hazing the new guy, but yeah. with a curse. How would you like to die? <laughs> so, of course, the brave lad ob- obliged, and that same day he fell off a roof and cracked his skull open on the concrete below. Oh my God. Jeez. So that was the last straw for Tony Earnshaw. He begged the Thirsk Museum to take the chair off his hands, but only if they agreed to never let anyone sit on it. For nearly 30 years, no one has been allowed to tempt the curse, despite many requests. I would ask to sit on it. I would climb my fat ass up there and sit in the goddamn chair. <laughs> That's the cadildo right in the middle of it and sit no, right on <laughs> No bones about it. <laughs> hey. I'm sorry. You say you put a dildo? No, no. Then, no. They were my, these new headphones are kind of weird. They kind of yeah. make it seem like you said something. I, I thought it might have sounded like that. I said something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I definitely didn't say that, though. All right. The next one is the 27 curse. Oh, yeah, this is a good one. Uh, our friend Hunter did an yeah. episode in his early podcast days. I was going to say that. Murder and such about the 27 club curse. There is a lot more people in the 27 club curse than what we have here. So... You guys can check into that a little further, but the first one, the original 27 Club Curse Man, is Robert Johnson, who, if you've never hey, listened hey. to Robert Johnson before, he's just a, he was a fucking renegade, he's a pioneer, he just did shit before shit was cool, he was a Delta Blues artist, um, <clears throat> he's the most celebrated Delta, ar- Delta Blues artist of all time. In August of 1938, just a few months after his 27th birthday, Johnson made moves on the wife of the owner of a roadhouse where he was playing. <laughs> After that, he drank from an open bottle of whiskey that he was offered, and he died three days later of strych strychnine strych strychnine strychnine poisoning. poisoning. That is, I never knew that was spelled so stupidly. That is definitely spelled like something I've never seen before. <laughs> He's buried in an unmarked grave in Mississippi. There's a lot of, also, uh, in the early days of uh, Hillbilly Horror Stories, they cover that he might have sold his soul to the devil for yeah. his musical abilities. And there's a lot of cool stuff of, uh, surrounding the devil and Robert Johnson. Yeah, I sold my soul for our podcast to do well, and I'm, so far I'm only mediocrely yeah. <laughs> successful at that. <laughs> I live a life of mediocrity. How about a fiddle and gold against your soul? <laughs> <laughs> Robert in the house in the garden and <laughs> Who the fuck made that song? <laughs> Charlie Daniels band? Yes. <laughs> what the fuck were they smoking? Oh, again? God. <laughs> hey, boys. I'm going to got a new song I want to pitch to you. <laughs> Chicken in the bed, man, picking out no. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Pork Knuckle, here we go, go. <laughs> Uncle Pork Knuckle. <laughs> yeah, the next one's Jan. No, the next one's Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix, famous drummer from Rush. In the early, <laughs> hour- <laughs> don't do that. Too soon. In the early hours of Friday, September eighteenth, nineteen seventy, while staying with a girlfriend, he had a lot of them in London. Jimi Hendrix took some sleeping pills. 
Nobody knows for sure how many pills he swallowed or whether he understood what he was taking. The drug was Vesperex, a strong barbiturate. Half a tablet was enough to put a man to sleep for eight hours. In other words, these are some good sleeping pills. Jimmy, he took nine of them. He had also been drinking. This was foolish and reckless, but it was in his character. During his years on the road, Jimmy had got into the habit of using drugs indiscriminately. Jimmy would take a handful of shit, not even knowing what it was, <laughs> quote, his friend Deering Howe said about him. This is taken from the RollingStones.com, so this is how you know it's good. And I'm just going to say it, Jimi Hendrix was overrated. <clears throat> ah, God. I don't think so, man. He was do- <clears throat> He was making guitar sounds before there was guitar sounds. Maybe for the, maybe for the time, he was, he was good. I'm going to agree to disagree on this okay. one. I think that he was... Uh, much like the Beatles, I respect yeah. what they did, what they've done. I think they fucking suck, <laughs> really bad. Yeah, I don't think they're good, but I respect what they did. I think Jimi Hendrix was maybe he was cool when Jerry Pauly was younger. Hold on, <laughs> Watchtower. How can you? That wasn't even his song. He did a version <laughs> Just of it. Just tell me what the fuck that is. Uh, all along the Watchtower. <laughs> Purple haze all up in my brain. The next is Janis Joplin at around 1 a.m. She was probably had a big old muff. October 4th, yeah, I bet she did. 1970. She was a bad bitch, though. She got her heroin kit out and injected a vein in her left arm. Then she went to the cigarette machine in the hotel lobby, returning to her room with a pack. She closed the door, started to undress, and reached to, pull her packet on, uh, to put her packet on the nightstand. As she did so, she kneeled over, hitting her face on the table as she fell to the floor where she was found dead the next day. And all these people were 27 years old in the 27 Club, so that's what, that's what makes it exceptionally weird. And whether it be a curse or just some type of weird pattern, the next one is the infamous Jim Morrison, who I think is overrated. I think, I'll agree. I think he was just fueled by drugs, and he did a lot of stuff that was out there, so people were just like, yeah, man, drugs. I think... Honestly, I think this is going to sound really weird, but I I respect a lot of old musicians, but I think they are a lot of overrated. Besides Pink Floyd, yeah, man, <laughs> they're still good. They're this still day. fucking good. Yeah, Pink Floyd, they're killer. Yeah, Morrison joined Pamela Corson in Paris in March 1971 at an apartment she had rented for him at 1719 Rue Beatrice. That's French. In La Marie's fourth <laughs> arrondissement. <laughs> We're so American and it's white. In, it was in Paris, okay, guys? <laughs> Paris, France. In letters, he described going for long walks to the city alone. During this time, he shaved his beard and lost some of the weight he had gained in the previous months. He died on July 3rd, 1971, at the age of 27. He was found by Corson in a bathtub at his apartment. The official cause of death was listed as heart failure, although... There's a lot of question marks around his death. There was no autopsy that was performed, as it was not required by Francois Law. (laughs) His death was two years to the day after the death of the Rolling Stones guitarist Brian Jones, and approximately nine months after the deaths of Jimi Hendrix and Janis Joplin, all whom died at the age of 27. Think of how much cool shit all these people could have made. And they were were 27. Just what a... Held it together... 27 like that's so young that young man i think Jimi hendrix I, know, I can't even have this conversation with you he's overrated <laughs> yeah definitely that's is. fucking racist is what that is <laughs> i'm waiting for hate comments on that <laughs> he's the fucking Jimi hendrix he made the guitar <laughs> he made the guitar <laughs> kurt cobain <clears throat> who was not the victim of a suicide he was murdered but yeah, you know, that's just my opinion. He was not suicided. Kurt Cobain's body was discovered by an electrician on Friday, April 8th, 1994. And I've been to Veretta Park where he used to write a lot of oh, the songs yeah. right next to his house. And mm-hmm. there's a lot of people that signed the bench there. It's a really peaceful park. It's really like a, it's a really cool experience, man. The answer to the question posed by the authors of who killed Kurt Cobain is simple. Kurt Cobain killed himself. I don't know about yeah. that. I don't know about that one. I beat my meat last night. He did so with sudden self-inflicted violence, leaving written evidence at his state of mind. Kurt's substance abuse counselor remembered how worried the musician had been about losing his home in a lawsuit. Quote, suicidal people tend to want to make a statement, Neil Stimson said. 
quote, I just kind of felt he killed himself in the house as to say, you're not going to take my house no matter what. And they try to make me go to rehab, and I won't go, go. Amy Winehouse is our last one here on the 27 list. In the instances, I'm sorry, the circumstances surrounding her death, Winehouse's bodyguard said that she had arrived at a residence three days before her death and felt she had been somewhat intoxicated. He observed moderate drinking over the next few days. He observed her laughing, listening to music, and watching TV at 2 a.m. the day of her death. According to the bodyguard, at 10 a.m., he observed her lying on her bed and tried unsuccessfully to rouse her. Mm. This did not raise much suspicion because she usually slept late after a night out. According to the bodyguard, shortly after 3 p.m., he checked on her again and observed her lying in the same position as before, leading to a further check in which he concluded that she was not breathing and had no pulse. He, at that time, called emergency medical services... At 3.54 p.m. on uh, the 23rd of July, 2011, two ambulances were called to Winehouse's home in Camden, London. Winehouse was pronounced dead at the scene. Shortly afterwards, the Metropolitan Police confirmed that she had indeed died. Coroner's inquest reached a verdict of misadventure. That's how I want to fucking go out, That's pretty cool. I want to go out at a misadventure. Yeah. The report released on the 26th of October 2011 explained that Winehouse's blood alcohol content was 416 milligrams per 100 milliliters, or in America, that's a .416. Jesus Christ, that's like four or five times the legal limit here in uh, the States. And this is the time of her death. More than five times the legal driving limit. Yeah, like I said, according to the, the coroner, the unintended consequences of such potentially fatal levels were her sudden death. Oof. Oh, my God. I thought I was fucking done after that one. <laughs> uh, let me see if these are even worth <clears throat> our time. That one kind of sucks. <laughs> this one. Whatever. Like King Tut. <clears throat> I'm good if you're good. I'm fucking good. All right. That's the curses episode. Unless you want to read that King Tut one, I don't. Nah, it's kind of stupid. Let's see. It's not very good. Okay. Yeah, you know, King Tut, look it up. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch didn't do shit. <laughs> oh shit! Bitch didn't do shit. <laughs> so here's what I'm thinking. Fuck em. Okay. <clears throat> Got a Ouija board back there somewhere. It's behind my head. Yeah, there it is. I feel like Uncle Pork Knuckles only had just a couple quick, you know, we could probably get him here if we needed to. Hey, I'm I'm all for it. But then once you fuck with one of those things, you're kind of just opening yourself up for good, for bad stuff, for good. Do we have enough room in between us for all that ass to fit in? (laughs) Do we need to make more space? (laughs) Ass incoming. (laughs) Now, the thing is, I saw some pictures of Uncle Grandpa Pork Knuckle. <laughs> yeah. My dad's a fucking liar. He knows about this shit. <laughs> He's just trying to keep it on the DL. He just knew that he was talking to a national audience, <laughs> and he didn't want to He didn't want to mess with it. Right. Yeah, I get that. Um, <clears throat> one day, the truth will come out about Grandpa Pork Knuckle. <laughs> okay. We'll get my dad on here. He'll tell the whole story. He's quite the storyteller. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, next week... I don't know what we're doing next week. No, we never do. We might not live until then. The coronavirus <laughs> the is real. The, wait, we're past we're past 27, so we don't have to worry about that curse. One of these curses. Way past 27. Yeah. We do have to worry about the coronavirus. Though. That's true. That's true. We do have to worry about meth. Yeah, especially in our area. <clears throat> There's a lot of stuff to worry about here in the right. Ohio studios, but one thing we don't have to worry about is you guys. Yeah. Thank you all for being so beautiful. Thank yeah. you for being so wonderful to us. Yeah. And being our friends for almost three years now. You guys are the reason that we're here and the reason that we're alive. You well, not, s- not true. I mean, but you, know. you give me something to believe in. Someone, Metaphorically speaking. Someone left us a review that says, um, <clears throat> excuse me. They like when I do Jesus songs. When I sing, when I sing like I'm um, in my old church days. Okay. When I sing Jesus songs. Okay. So maybe I'll try and incorporate that more into the show. Sure. Just bust out into 
Jesus music. Okay. Do you know any good Jesus songs? I can't say I do. <laughs> <laughs> They've all... There was this one. I'll just sing a Creed song. <laughs> there, yeah. <laughs> when you are with me, I'm free. There was this one song they always used to sing in church when I was a teenager. And there was a <laughs> fucking cross-eyed fucker. <laughs> he was so stupid looking. And they would never let him do anything in the church. And you could... God damn it, that's why Christianity so much. They're fucking passive-aggressive hypocrites, man. <laughs> they are hypocritical as Why wouldn't fuck. they let this guy play in the band? He sucked. Yes, he sucked. He wasn't good. And they never let him do anything in the church band. <laughs> but the one song... You only got one eye that opens, buddy. You can't see the music. Harry. Oh, here comes my wife with food. Harry. And... Hold on a second. Let me pause this. I'll take it for him. My wife just brought down like seven racks of ribs. We got to end this real quick. <laughs> yeah. The guy, lazy eye, cross eyed. They oh, yeah, let yeah, him yeah. on the stage. Right. And, but they would let him up for one song. <laughs> His name wasn't Harry. It was Todd. Okay. And the song they let him come up and do was I'm a friend of God. And he would play the fuck out of this tambourine. <laughs> and he'd be like, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. But then I would just i would sing that song with the passion of a thousand million christians but i would sing i am a friend of todd because his name was todd and, it was, and i would say i am a friend of todd i am a friend of todd he calls me a friend and i would just tear that shit up i could see it for todd yeah do it for todd is he dead now no he was a cook at a waffle house and i'm sure that's still where he's at so he probably wants to be dead <laughs> What if I fit one of these waffles in my dick hole? <laughs> well, how many times he's clamped a waffle iron down on his dick? In a, in a weird twist of fate, many years later, I started working security. Yeah, security yeah. And it took me to Waffle House. Right. And he was cooking. And I was like, Todd! And he had no fucking clue who I was. I was so sad. <laughs> but on his lunch break, they would let him sit down and eat. And this guy would eat a waffle, and he would put Heinz 57 on the waffle with syrup. What the fuck? And he would inhale this waffle. And I'm like, no wonder they only let you play the goddamn tambourine. That's You're a, a fucking mongoloid. That's the most American thing I've ever heard. <laughs> it's, it's putting fucking A1 on a waffle. Oh, no, nah, not the fancy shit. This that's, is Heinz 57. It's a knockoff. We're going to eat these ribs. Oh, my God. Thank you guys for listening. This is a terrible episode. Yeah. Yeah. Better luck next time. Yeah. Love you. <laughs>